Welcome to Premier UPSC IES. So, continuing with the different lectures of modern history for prelims UPSC IES, this is the lecture 6 and the most important part almost among all the different previous lectures uh, and one of the most important for the coming lectures that is the emergence of Indian National Congress INC 1885. Political associations before the INC in Bengal. Bangabhasha Prakasika Sabha in 1836. It was formed by associates of Raja Ram Mohan Roy. It was not by Raja Ram Mohan Roy, but the associates of Raja Ram Mohan Roy. Zamindari Association in Calcutta in 1838. It aimed to safeguard the interests of the landlords. It was limited in scope but marked the beginning of organized political activity and use of methods of constitutional agitation for the redressal of grievances. Bengal British India Society in 1843. It aimed at the collection and dissemination of the information relating to the actual condition of the people of British India. In 1851, the Zamindari Association and the Bengal British India Society merged into British Indian Association. British Indian Association in 1851. It sent a petition to the British Parliament in the form of suggestions to be incorporated in the renewed charter of the company such as Establishment of a separate legislature of a popular character. Separation of the executive from judicial functions. Reduction in salaries of higher officers. Abolition of SAR duty, Abakari and stamp duties. One of the demands was accepted in the Chartered Act of 1853 and provided for the addition of six members to the Governor General's Council for legislative purposes. East India Association in 1866. It was formed by Dada Bai Nauroji in London. The aim was to discuss the Indian question and influence public men in England to promote Indian welfare. Later, branches were started in Indian cities. Indian League in 1875. It was formed by Sisir Kumar Ghosh. The objective was to stimulate a sense of nationalism amongst the people and encourage political education. Indian Association of Calcutta in 1876. It is also called the Indian National Association. It was founded by Surindranath Banerjee and Anand Mohan Bose as a reaction to the pro-landlord policies of the British Indian Association. Indian Association Indian Association was the most important association in the pre-Congress era. It aimed to promote the political, intellectual and material advancements of the people through legitimate means. In its pursuit, it protested against the reduction of age limit in 1877 for candidates of the Indian Civil Service Examination. It demanded the simultaneous holding of civil service examination in India and also called for in Indianization of higher administrative posts. They campaigned against the Repressive Arms Act and the Vernacular Press Act. The association became popular and branches were opened in other towns and cities of Bengal and even outside Bengal. It sponsored an All India Conference which first took place in Calcutta on December 28 to 30, 1883. It was called the Indian National Congress. Another conference was held in 1885. Over 100 delegates attended it from different parts of the country. It was thus a forerunner of the Indian National Congress as an All India Nationalist Organization and later emerged with Indian National Congress in 1886. Other political associations before INC Pune Sarvajanik Sabha in 1867. It was founded by Mahadev Govind Ranade. The objective was to serve as a bridge between the government and the people. Bombay Presidency Association in 1885. It was founded by Badaluddin Tiyabji, Feroz Shah Mehta and K.T. Telang. Madras Mahajan Sabha in 1884. It was founded by M. Veera Raghavachari, V. Subramaniam Ayer and P. Ananda Charlu. Beginning of the Indian National Congress The aforementioned political associations laid a solid ground for the establishment of all Indian organization. The idea came to fruition in the form of Indian National Congress by the efforts of a retired English servant A. O. Hume. He sought the cooperation of other leading intellectuals of the time. The first session of the Indian National Congress at Gokul Das Tejpal Sanskrit College in Bombay in December 1885. It was attended by 72 delegates and presided over by Vomesh Chandra Banerjee. After this, Congress met almost every year in different parts of the country. Criticism of Congress being safety valve. 
Some historians have propounded a theory that A.O. Hume formed the Congress so that it would act as a safety valve for realizing for releasing the growing discontent of the Indians. And hence Lord Dufferin, who was the Viceroy at the time, didn't obstruct the formation of Congress. Marxist historians such as R. P. Dutt opined that the Indian National Congress was born out of a conspiracy about a popular uprising in India. Modern historians, however, dispute this idea. They considered the Indian National Congress as a representation of the politically conscious Indians who wanted to set up a national body. If the Indians had convened such a body, the British would offer an insurmountable opposition and would not have allowed to form it. Bipan Chandra argues that the early Congress leaders used A.O. Hume as a lightning conductor, that is, as a catalyst to bring together the nationalist forces under one roof. Attitude of the government towards Congress In 1887, the government failed to persuade Congress to confine itself to social issues as the Congress was becoming increasingly critical of the colonial rule. Lord Dufferin resorted to open condemnation and labelled the Congress as a group of seditious Brahmins, disloyal Babus, a factory of sedition. When they couldn't keep it grounded, they resorted to divide and rule policy towards Congress. They encouraged a group of loyalists such as Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan and Raja Shiv Prasad Singh of Benares to organize the United Indian Patriotic Association to counter Congress propaganda. Now begins the moderate space from 1885 to 1905. Moderates and their ideology The early leaders of the Congress were staunch believers of liberalism and moderate politics such as Dada Bhai Naroji, Feroz Shah Mehta, Din Shah Vacha, W.C. Banerjee, and S.N. Banerjee. They came to be labelled as moderates to differentiate them from the new nationalists of the early 20th century who were referred to as the extremists. The moderates believed in constitutional agitation within the confines of the law. According to them, the British wanted to be just to the Indians but were not aware of the real conditions. So they wanted to create a public opinion and put forth public demands to the government through resolutions, petitions, meetings, etc. According to them, the authorities would concede these demands gradually. A British Committee of the Indian National Congress was established in London in 1899 to persuade the British parliamentarians. The moderates wanted to establish political connections with Britain because it was in India's interest at that stage of history. They believed that the time was not ripe for a direct challenge to British rule. Contribution of Moderates Economic critique of British imperialism, the moderates such as Dada Bhai Nauroji, R. C. Dutt, Din Shavacha, among others, analyzed the political economy under colonial rule and put forward the brain theory to explain their exploitation of India. Moderates were able to create a public opinion that British rule was the major cause of India's poverty and economic backwardness. Dada Bhai Nauroji wrote Poverty and Un British Rule in India, explaining the drain theory and home charges. The other who gave economic critique include G. V. Joshi, G. Subramaniam Iyer, G. K. Gokhale, and P. C. Ray. Constitutional Reforms in Propaganda and Legislature The Nationalists helped with the growth of the national movement. The British have introduced an Imperial Legislative Council under the Indian Councils Act 1861. Before proceeding to the constitutional reforms, we need to understand the provisions of the Act and how this body was impotent and was designed to disguise official measures as having been passed by a representative body. Provisions of Indian Councils Act of 1861 it gave the representation for the Indians in the law-making process, albeit minimal, and they were only nominated members, that too as the non-official members, at least the process started with this act. The first three members were the following, Raja of Benares, Maharaja of Patiala, Sir Dinkar Rao. The process of centralization, which began with the Act of 1773 and reached its pinnacle by 1833 Charter Act, started to dissolve with it. Now the decentralization process started with some legislative powers to Bombay and Madras presidencies. It provided for new legislative councils for Bengal, Northwest Frontier Province and Punjab which were established in 1862, 1866 and 1897 respectively.
it empowered viceroy to promulgate ordinances for six months in case of emergency without the concurrence of the legislative council also empowered viceroy to make rules for convenient transactions of business and recognize the portfolio system introduced by lord canning in 1859 However, the Indian members were few in number. In the 30 years from 1862 to 1892, only about 45 Indians were nominated to it. Most of them being wealthy landlords who were loyalists to the British. Post the formation of the Congress, the moderates demanded the constitutional reforms. Demands of the moderates. From 1885 to 1892, the nationalist demands included Expansion of council and greater participation of Indians in councils, reform of councils to give more power to them and especially greater control over finances. Their demands for reforms were meant to have been considered in the Indian Councils Act 1892, but the Congress civilly criticized them. Let us look at the features of the Act of the Indian Councils Act 1892. Features of the Indian Councils Act 1892 the number of additional members in both the imperial legislative and the provincial legislative councils was raised. The governor general could have 10 to 16 non officials increased from 6 to 10 earlier in the imperial council. The non official members were to be nominated by the Bengal Chamber of Commerce and the provincial legislative councils. The members were recommended by the universities, municipalities, the minars, and chambers of commerce, hence, it brought in the principle of representation. Enabled the, enabled the budget to be discussed and allowed for questions could be asked. Limitations of the Indian Council Act 1892 The official members still retained their majority in the council as the non-official voice was inactive, ineffective. This imperial legislative council met hardly during its tenure in 1909. It met on an average for only 13 days in a year and the number of Indians as part of the unofficial members was only 5. The budget could not be voted upon but only discussed. The could, they couldn't introduce any amendments to be made to it. Even for the questions raised, the supplementary questions could not be asked nor could answers to any question be discussed. Criticism of the Act of 1892 by moderates The early nationalists expressed their dissatisfaction with them and now demanded a majority of the elected Indians control over the budget, a power to vote upon and amend the budget. They also gave the slogan, no taxation without representation. They gradually increased the scope of their demand. Some leaders like Dada Bhai Naroji, Gopal Krishna Gokhale and Tirak demanded self-government to be introduced in India on the lines of self-governing colonies of Canada and Australia. Other demands of the moderates. Indianization of the government service and separation of the judicial from executive functions, they criticized the aggressive foreign policy which resulted in the annexation of Burma, attack on Afghanistan and separation of the tribals in the northwest. To increase in expenditure on health, sanitation, education, elementary and technical, irrigation works and improvement of agriculture etc. They demanded better treatment for Indian labor abroad in other British colonies where they faced oppression and racial discrimination. They called for civil rights such as the right to speech, thought, association and a free press. Evaluation of moderates Though they could not draw the masses to them, they did a great deal to awaken the national sentiment. They represented all those having common interests and awakened the need to rally around a common program against a common enemy. Above all, their efforts brought to the fore the feeling of belonging to one nation. They exposed the exploitative nature of colonial rule and trained people in political work. Thus, they acted as a base for a mass-based movement to emerge in the subsequent years. Extremist phase 1905-1917 Factors for the growth of militant nationalisms A militant nationalist approach to the political activity started rising in 1890s and took concrete shape by 1905. As a result, also grew another revolutionary wing in the subsequent years in the 1920s and 30s. There were many factors for the growth of militant nationalism. Let us discuss some of those. Recognition of the true nature British rule There were several severe famines which killed 19 lakh persons between 1896 and 1900 and affected large areas of the Deccan. There were large-scale riots in the Deccan, but the government did not a thing to alleviate the condition of people, instead became more exploitative. 
the Natu brothers were deported without trial and Tilak and others were imprisoned on charges of sedition in 1897. More repressive sedition laws were introduced under the IPC section 124A in 1898. Official Secrets Act curbed freedom of the press in 1904. In 1904, the Indian Universities Act brought the universities under the government control and described them as factories producing political revolutionaries. This brought the realization that British rule was not progressive socially and culturally. It suppressed the spread of education, especially mass and technical education. Growth of confidence and self-respect. It was restored by Tilak, Aurobindo and Bipin Chandrapal repeatedly urging the nationalists to rely on the character and capacities of the Indian people. Tilak started Ganesh and Shivaji festivals to awaken and mobilize the masses. International influences. Industrial growth of Japan after 1868, the defeat of the Italian army by Ethiopians, the Boer Wars where the British faced reverses and Japan's victory over Russia demolished the myths of European invincibility. The nationalist movements in Ireland, Russia, Egypt, Turkey, Persia and China inspired Indians to stand united and to make sacrifices. They realized they could take on the mightiest of the empires. Failure of the moderate methods. The younger members of the Congress were dissatisfied with the methods of the moderates. They were critical of the so-called three Ps, prayer, petition and protest and described this method as political medicacy. Reactionary policies of Curzon. The measures adopted during his rule such as the Official Secrets Act, the Indian Universities Act, the Calcutta Corporation Act and above all the proposal to partition in Bengal aroused the nationalist sentiment against the British rule in India. Growth of leaders having extremist approach. They advocated a more militant approach. They included as, such as Raj Narayan Bose, Ashwini Kumar Datta, Aurobindo Ghosh, Vipin Chandrapal, Vishnu Shastri Chiplonkar, Balganga Dhartilak, Lala Lashmat Rai. Basic tenets of the extremists. They hated the foreign rule and believed no hope could be derived from it. They advocated that the Indians should work out their own salvation. They wanted Swaraj to be the goal of national movement and advocated direct political action as the need. They believed in the capacity of the masses to challenge the authority. They called for personal sacrifices and said that true nationalists would be always ready for it. They advocated methods of Swadeshi and boycott movements for achieving the goals of Swaraj. Bengal Partition and Swadeshi Movement of 1905 Decision of Bengal Partition The British government announced its decision to partition of Bengal in December 1903. The want, they wanted to divide it into two parts such as Bengal comprising the Western Bengal with Bihar and Orisha and Eastern Bengal and Assam. Calcutta would be capital of the Western Bengal and Dhaka to be the capital of Eastern Bengal. The official reason they gave was the Bengal was too big to be administered and the partition would help in the development of Assam. However, the real motive was to weaken Bengal, which was the nerve center of Indian nationalism. In reality, they sought to divide Bengalis into religious and linguistic lines. Anti-partition campaign Initially, Surendranath Banerjee, K.K. Mitra and Prithvish Chandra Rai and other moderate leaders wrote petitions to the government organized public meetings, memoranda and propaganda through pamphlets and newspapers such as Hitabadi, Sanjeevani and Bengali. We wanted to exert pressure on the government through an educated public opinion in India and England to prevent the unjust partition of Bengal. They were successful in creating public opinion, but the Kurzon chose to ignore it and announced partition in July 1905. A huge public meeting was organized in Calcutta Town Hall and the boycott resolution was passed and a formal proclamation of Swadeshi movement was made on August 7, 1905. The leader spread the message to boycott Manchester Cloth and Liverpool Salt. On 16th October 1905, the partition formally came into force. This day was observed as a day of mourning throughout of Bengal. People fasted, bathed in Ganga, came out in procession singing Vande Matram and Amar Sona Bangla. This became the national anthem of Bangladesh and was composed by Rabindranath Tagore. People tied Rakhis as a symbol of unity of the two halves of Bengal. The Indian National Congress in 1905 passed a resolution under the residency of Gokhale to condemn the partition of Bengal and the reactionary policies of the Kurzon. An IMC supported the anti-partition and Swadeshi movement of Bengal. 
the extremist leaders led by tilak lajpat rai bipin chandra pal and arvind ghosh wanted to the movement to be taken to other parts of the country as well they wanted to go beyond a boycott of foreign goods and make it full fledged political mass struggle with the goal of attaining swaraj moderates were not willing to go that far finally they got separated after surat split surat split of 1907 There was a conflict between the two groups that it came to a but came to a temporary halt after it was declared that the goal of the INC was Swaraj in 1906 under the presidency of Dada Bhai Naroji. However, the moderate extremist dispute once again started over the techniques of struggle. The conflict reached a deadlock at the Surat session in 1907, and the party split with serious consequences for the Swadeshi movement. This event has been popularly recorded in the history as Surat Split. The extremists called for Swadeshi and boycott, including the boycott of government schools and colleges, government service, courts, legislative councils, municipalities, government titles, etc. New methods of struggle, boycott of foreign goods, public meetings, and processions came to be major methods of mass mobilization. Along with these, other forms of popular expression were invented. Formation of voluntary organizations. Corps of volunteers or samitis were formed, such as Swadesh Bandhav Samiti of Ashwini Kumar Datta in Barisal, Swadeshi Sangam of V O Chidambaram Pillai Subramanya Siva, and others in Tirunal Valley. Social works and organizing festivals. They generated they generated political consciousness among the masses through magic lantern lectures, Swadeshi songs, providing training to their members, social work during famines and epidemics, organization of schools, training in Swadeshi crafts, etc. the tradition festivals and occasions were used as a means of reaching out to the masses and spreading political messages the nation shivaji festivals became a medium of swadeshi propaganda social reforms and education self reliance that is atma shakti was encouraged which included social reform and campaign against the caste operation early marriage dowry system consumption of alcohol etc Bengal National College was set up with Aurobindo Ghosh as its principal. It was inspired by Tagore's Shanti Niketan. Soon, national schools and colleges came about all over the country. National Council of Education was set up in August 1906 to organize a system of education on national lines and under the national control. School education was imparted in vernacular medium. A Bengal Institute of Technology was set up for technical education. Nationalists raised the funds to send students to Japan for advanced learning. Swadeshi industries, Swadeshi textile mills, soap and match fa- match factories, tanneries, banks, insurance companies, shops, etc. were set up. Swadeshi steam navigation company was established by V O C Pillai, a Chittagorian, that gave a challenge to the British India Steam Navigation Company. Extent of mass participation in the movement. students they participated in large numbers to propagate and practice Swadeshi. They took part in the picketing of shops selling foreign goods. women women especially especially those of the urban middle classes also took an active part in processions and picketing muslim some of the muslims such as the barrister abdul rasul yaqad hussain maulana azad participated in the movement however most of the upper and the middle class muslims stayed away they supported the partition of the plea that it would give them a muslim majority east bengal it was led by nawab salimullah of dhaka he also formed an all india muslim league in december 1905 labor unrest and the trade unions subramanya siva and chidambaram pillai led strikes in the chitikorin and thirunal valley in a foreign owned cotton mill lala lajpat rai and ajit singh organized a strike of the railway workers in rawalpindi the labor unrest subsided under strict action annulment of the partition thus the social base of the movement expanded to the students the women and the lower middle classes in cities and towns it also spread to the other parts of the country thus ushering in off a new chapter in the history of the national movement therefore the partition of bengal was cancelled in 1911 to curb the menace of the revolutionary territorialism king george announced in december 1911 that eastern bengal would be assimilated into the bengal presidency districts where bengali was spoken were once again unified and assam bihar and orissa was separated the capital was shifted to new delhi government repression of, of the movement following acts were brought to check the anti government activity by british seditious meetings act 1907 Indian Newspapers Incitement to Offences Act 1908, Criminal Law Amendment Act 1908, and Indian Press Act 
Tilak was tried for sedition for writing about bomb thrown by the Bengal revolutionaries in Muzaffarpur in his newspaper Kesari. He was sentenced to six years of imprisonment and a fine of rupees 1000 and was sent to Mandalay jail in Burma for six years. Lajpat Rai left for abroad. Aurobindo Ghosh and Bipin Chandra Pal retired from active politics. The extremists didn't have an organization while the moderates had no cops at base as the youth rallied behind the extremists. Evaluation of the Swadeshi movement The movement fizzled out by 1908 after severe government repression and also due to the failure to recreate an effective organization. The movement failed to reach the peasantry and non-cooperation and passive resistance remained mere ideas. The internal squabbles among leaders magnified by the Surat split in 1907. In result, organizational support was weak. Without it, sustaining a mass-based movement was difficult. However, it proved to be a leap forward in more ways than one. Several untouched sections, students, women, workers, some sections of the urban and rural population participated. The Swadeshian boycott movement and the emergence of the extremist nationalists made the government modify its strategy towards the nationalists. John Morley, the Secretary of the State, started the policy of rallying them or the policy of carrot and stick. It included a three-pronged approach of repression, conciliation and suppression. The extremists were repressed mildly, mainly to frighten the moderates. The moderates were to be play, placated through some concessions and succeeded in isolating the extremists. So this was all about INC, moderate phase and extreme phase. In our next session, we will study about the Morley Montori forms. Stay tuned. Do subscribe to Premier UPSC IS.